Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Hot podcast. This is episode 213 for the 24th of Sivan in a leap year. So there's a misconception amongst some people who most likely have never owned businesses themselves, who don't necessarily really have much of an entrepreneurial streak, who think that business owners, especially let's say those who own large corporations, but they might think this about owners of smaller businesses too, that the role of the business owner is really to kind of sit in their office or maybe even sit in their fancy home and count their money and not really have much of a relationship with the company, with the employees, not really know much of what's going on and kind of just like sit up high above in their ivory tower, enjoying the fruits of everybody else's labor. So for anybody who actually has a business or who have ever has had a business, you most likely know that this is very, very far, far from the truth. And this is especially very far from the truth for those people who have startups, who kind of like started really from the ground up to the point that there's actually a phrase in Silicon Valley, which I don't know where this originated for, but there's a phrase that says that the mark of a startup is when you see the CEO picking up the trash in the back in the bathroom. So this is very much true that basically like when somebody really, uh, whether it's the owner or the CEO of a company, and it's a company that is like something that's very personal to them, it's something that they really started on their own, then they're going to be involved in every last detail of that company, most likely, if they want the company to succeed, obviously, down to the very bathroom, to the trash on the bathroom floor. This is something that they're going to be involved with. So why am I bringing this up today? Because it came to mind in what we're going to be learning about today, how about God and about how this mistake that a lot of people make about entrepreneurs or about CEOs of companies is actually very similar to the mistake that certain scholars, believe it or not, have made about God. And this is a pretty famous argument, actually, that has come up in that comes up in Kabbalistic literature. And we'll see where Chabad stands in this and where the altar rabbi stands in this argument. And the, the argument, the debate basically revolves around this fact of is God like the CEO who is aloof and sitting in his ivory tower and looking down on the world from above? Or is God like the startup entrepreneur who is the CEO of the startup who is involved in every last detail of creation down to picking up trash in the, ba- in the bathroom? So most likely, if you've been following along thus far in these podcasts, you probably know that the Ultra Rebbe and Chabad Chassidus at large really believes the latter. And this is exactly what it is that we're going to be addressing today. We're going to be addressing this mistake that some people make about God being aloof. So people who acknowledge the fact that God created the world, but then they think to themselves that God created the world and then is kind of standing back and just letting things unfold as they unfold. And he's not really involved in the day-to-day aspects of creation or most definitely at least not in the like very, very, very detailed minutia of creation and divine providence of every leaf on the tree and all that kind of stuff. And the reason why this is coming up right now is because the ultra is actually kind of sympathizing with these people, with people who might think this way. And he's, he's going to explain to us why it might be that somebody might come to this kind of conclusion. And then of course, he's going to bring it back and he's going to tell us why they're wrong. <laughs> but he's going to start off by explaining this argument like it's sort of like in a debate often somebody will point out the argument of the other side in order to really get into further detail to uh, to explain their side better so in order to really be able to explain one's your side of the argument it's good to always understand the other side of the argument as well right so that's what we're going to be looking at today 
So the argument from the other side basically stems from the fact, as we'll learn in the text, that what we've been learning so far in the past couple of episodes, and it's come up previously in Tanya as well, is that when it comes to God, and when we look at God on an intrinsic essential level, God is unchanging. That's one of the things that are really uh, definitive about God is his unchanging nature and that he's not affected in the sense that he doesn't change. His his being doesn't change by the happenings in the world. And we've learned that God is the same before he was before creation and after as he was after creation. So thus with this reasoning, with this understanding that God is unchanging, it's actually very, uh, it, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of rational to think then to conclude that, okay, if God is unchanging, we see that the world around us changes and the world around us is a creation of God. We are acknowledging that. So thus we must say that God is not so involved in this changing world because the world is fluctuating so much but yet we know that God is unchanging so he must be aloof but the altar of his response to this is that this is in fact not the case at all and this actually is totally impossible because to say this kind of thing we'd have to be basically saying in tech in technical terms that the symptom this constriction that we spoke about with which God created the world happened on a literal level that it, God literally constricted and hid himself from the world that he, that he literally removed himself from the world and to say such a thing first of all we'll learn is really ridiculous when it comes to God, because this is ascribing a, a sort of corporeality to God. We're saying that God actually did change himself in a certain way, that he removed himself literally from the world. And the truth is, as the ultra will explain to us, it's in fact the total opposite. It's that the, this fact that we're saying that God is unchanging is not because he's so removed from the world. It's actually because he's so imminent. He's so present here. And that God's knowledge of the world is so present and is so all-encompassing that it's a type of self-knowledge that when we say that God knows about all the happenings in the world, every single creature, every single element of creation, this is all a type of knowledge that's within himself. So it's not that God is removed from the world. And when we say that God's unchanging, it's actually alluding to the fact that God is very, very much present in the world. So let's get into the text and see how the ultra Rebbe explains all of this. So here we go. So now the ultra Rebbe says, and, and, and for context, we're still in the middle of chapter seven of Shari Yochid Vaimuna. And so the ultra Rebbe is continuing. This is a new section of, it's like a new paragraph of chapter seven, but he's continuing along the theme of that, which we've been learning about God's knowledge and how God's knowledge is one with him and how God knows everything in the world and all of that. And the idea of intrinsic knowledge which is different than our type of supplemental knowledge, like that when we learn things, we're learning things and they're adding to our knowledge versus for God, nothing can ever be added or subtracted from him. So all of God's knowledge of everything in the world is intrinsic to who he is. And so the altar says here, he begins this section and he says that from here, we can understand the mistake of certain chachamim, so of certain scholars, so it's not just like stupid people that make this mistake. It's actual scholars that make this mistake. So these scholars, they think, according to them, and God should forgive them, the altar of says, that they make the mistake that this idea of what the Arizal wrote about, this idea of the tzimtzum, this, uh, this idea of the constriction, which is written there, happened in a literal sense, it happened kipshuto. It's called in Hebrew that the 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 tzimtzum was kipshuto. That tzimtzum was literal. That God literally detached himself, literally removed himself, his essence, God forbid, from the world, and that he's just supervising from above with this kind of divine providence from above on everything here in the world, whether we're talking about the heavenly realms or whether we're talking about down here on earth that God is supervising all of this from above, from kind of like a different realm, a different sphere. And the altar of says that not only is this definitely not the case, that the symptom is not literal at all, because by saying so, this is ascribing a sort of corporeality to God who is totally different than like to in uh, myriads and myriads upon myriads of degree from people. So it's like this idea that we can even think of God as doing such a thing as like removing himself in this kind of way. That itself is something it's like we're anthropomorphizing God in a way that just is not is laughable, basically, is what the altar was saying. And not only this, he says, it's, it's actually the complete opposite. It's actually that they're totally missing the point, point, because especially if they are believers and sons of believers, they should 
know that God knows everything. God knows all of the things that he created in this world, in this lowly world. And God is supervising them. Yes, he's supervising them, but not from this place from above. It's actually like a real supervision. Like God is very, very, very much involved. And thus, when God knows these things, when God knows about um, all of his creation, this type of knowledge does not add anything to him and does not add any khirash. It doesn't add any newness to him because God knows everything. God knows everything as a way of self-knowledge. Just like we know ourselves, this is how God knows the world because there's and all of the worlds because there is nothing apart from God. Thus, so to speak, we can say that God's being and essence and knowledge are all one and the same. So that's the end of the section. And so just to recap and maybe bring it back to the intro is that when we think about God, a lot of people might make this mistake and think of him as being this like aloof character who's just kind of like supervising above from above to below and isn't super involved in our daily life. And just like maybe as I gave that example in the beginning, that a lot of people tend to think of CEOs of companies as being aloof, as being kind of like not so involved and they're just like sitting at home and letting the company run the show. But a good CEO, especially a CEO of a company, of a a startup, I mean, like of a smaller company is very much involved. And when we think about God, I mean, all the more so this is true, that God is very much involved in the world. So involved, in fact, that the type of knowledge that God has of the world and the type of providence and supervision that God has in the world is so true and so real that it actually is one and the same with him. So when we say that God is unchanging in his knowledge, it's not because he's apart from the world, but it's actually the complete opposite. It's because he very much is in the world and all all that God knows about the world is actually him knowing himself. So that is it for today. And we're going to continue along these lines tomorrow and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak Ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.